Dear viewers, due to continuous rise in the number of COVID cases and the fears of a new wave, we are forced to switch the program to voiceover mode for a few days. As soon as the situation gets back to normal, we'll be back with the original format of the program. Thank you for your cooperation. Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and today in this segment today, we are going to discuss about how USA is going to ask the WTO about a litigation against India on wheat subsidy. So here, agriculture subsidy, which has become a controversy to be taken to WTO. These are the many topics that we are going to cover. For prelims, World Trade Organization structure and various round of negotiations are very important for you. Another thing that we are going to throw a light upon is going to be how our subsidy is calculated, the different boxes of the agreement on agriculture. Again, the challenges and how is the agricultural sector very different of India and the West. So if we talk about US lawmakers, they are seeking a litigation at WTO against India on wheat subsidy. Because now, a group of 28 members of the US Congress in a letter have stated that American commodity producers are operating at a clear disadvantage if they are comparing to their competitors primarily from India. And this is a very, very serious issue. Because up till now, US wheat associates have been aggressively pushing for such a move by the administration. This has now already taken place. But we have to see what does India, what are the issues that occur and exist in India. Will that be taken at a dispute settlement case or not? Will those negotiations and arguments be taken into consideration or not? Now, if we talk about what they, would the West is worried about, the West is mainly worried about the estimation that Indian wheat exports for the marketing Ending on June 30, 2022, it will be 5 million metric ton. And that will leave almost 28 million metric ton of wheat stock remaining. The distortion of international wheat and rice trade from the policies of India is severe, which costs the US wheat farmers more than $500 million per year in lost income. And that is according to their own study. So, let's see. First, that what is the background of the entire situation. Now, in May 2018, the US submitted a communication under the provisions of WTO Agreement on Agriculture on certain measures of India providing market price support, which is minimum support price in India, to wheat and rice for the years 2010-11 to 2013-14. And it also said that India has underreported its domestic support which has been provided for wheat and rice and violated its commitment under the WTO Agreement on Agriculture. The second issue was that the US is raising regarding the quantity procured on eligible production and India has maintained that eligible production must be that part of the total production of a crop that is actually procured by the agencies. Not, the problem is not only the US. But many other countries, such as Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and also European Union, they have been attacking on India on the similar grounds, if not wheat or rice, but some other commodities, such as supply management policy for skimmed milk powder, sugar, pulses, in particular the export subsidies that are granted to all these products, commodities and the import restriction on pulses. What is an agriculture subsidy basically? In a country like India, agriculture subsidies keep the farmers afloat. In the moments of distress, it is the government that sees that the profit, if not profit, then an equilibrium is available to the farmers with respect to the cost of production and what they are getting in return. So an agriculture subsidy is a government incentive basically which has been paid to the agribusinesses, agriculture and organizations of farms. The aim is to supplement their income, manage the supply of 
agriculture commodities and influence the cost and supply of such commodities and as we see the demands from the farmer unions about legalization of minimum support price is showing the issue is very important for us to understand what is the need of agriculture subsidy it simulates agriculture production they have the assurance that if because of the bumper crops the profit is not available to them or they are not getting the proper returns then government will step in with msp subsidy in agriculture it means providing some important input to farmers at a concessional rate that is much lower than its market rate this can also be given now subsidies in agriculture can also mean that through fertilize through the prices of certain inputs which are very high in the market but if the government is providing hand holding financial support it will also give farmers a boost to produce making basic necessities available to poor people through extension of consumer services and farm subsidies form about 2% of india's gdp moving on how is the situation in west very different from india first the policies of for regulation by wto these are based largely on the structure of agricultural sector in the rich western countries where farm sizes is, are very large so there a 5% subsidy is well and good but for india the average farm in india is around 2 acres and here even a 10% subsidy feels very meager developed countries they fail to recognize the that they offer many other types of income support for their citizens which also includes farmers now this situation is not the same in india for the us we have food stamps welfare spending checks during economic downturns unemployment benefits are also given social security some health insurance is also given for india the infrastructure simply does not support the creation of similar policies then agriculture is not just an economic sector for india it serves as the umbilical bond for the farmers that cannot be severed while the west the agriculture might be just an economic activity for india farmers consider their land of farming and cropping to be their mother Indian farmers do not just produce the food for their counter patriots but they also get closely connected to their lands and their culture and personal lives now the south asian nations have a population of 1.3 billion it's a very profitable market for the western countries to capture and they are through this litigation it seems like they are because of not getting proper access specifically in india the us is moving on with this lit- litigation since the era of trump Now if we talk about WTO's agreement on agriculture it is aimed to remove trade barriers and also to promote transparent market access and integration of global markets agreement on agriculture it stands on three pillars first domestic support it calls for reduction in domestic subsidies that distorts free trade and fair prices now under this provision the aggregate measurement of support is to be reduced by 20% over a period of 6 years by developing countries and 13% over a period of 10 years by developing countries now under the subsidies and this subsidies are differently categorized in green amber and blue box in green box subsidies that do not distort trade are kept or cause minimal disruption then in amber box broad ranges of subsidies are there limited to 5% of agricultural production 10 for the developing countries in blue box broad range of subsidies are allowed but must be designed to minimize trade distortion again it also talks about market access which for the goods in wto it means the conditions tariff and non tariff measures which are agreed by the members are kept for the entry of specific goods into their market export subsidy here subsidy on input of agriculture making export cheaper or other incentives for exports such as import duty remission are included under export subsidy so this is the agreement on agriculture how are subsidies calculated so in order for us to understand how are subsidies calculated subsidies are calculated specifically by the wto members and that is calculated with reference to international prices and these are assumed to be competitive prices in the negotiation leading to the adoption of the agreement of agriculture the international prices of each commodity was a fixed external reference price 
taken as the average of international prices during the year 1986-88. For developing countries like India, the market price support for a crop cannot exceed 10% of the total value of its production. And India's market price support to its crop never exceeded 10% of their value of production. However, the US has challenged that India arguing that its market price support to major crops is well above the threshold. This is the issue. Moving on, if we talk about the challenges. First, there are the first observation has been that creeping crisis in agriculture is something that has been neglected for ages. Land fragmentation which led to non-usage of proper mechanical equipments for better production. Another thing, small acres of land because India has small and marginal producers, they tend to not produce a lot. And the soil health is also declining. So many reasons are there. WTO rules have very little tolerance for any ad hoc policy making in agriculture and India works like that. India cannot, because of the stagnation of policy, tries to bring many policies but they are either protested against or not understood in the proper manner or not taken in the international forum. And also because of the non-revival of Doha rounds, the Doha round which was the latest round of trade negotiations among the WTO members, the agriculture negotiations for that be began in 2000 and that was a commitment under the Uruguay round and they were brought into the Doha round and broadly the objective was to reduce distortion in agriculture trade caused by high tariffs and other barriers, export subsidies and some kind of domestic support. Now, because India needs to revive it, that still remains a challenge. The centre as a way forward must first get its act together for undertaking a structural transformation of the agriculture sector. Because MSPs and subsidies just are survival kit. They do not provide abundance. It's not going to work in the international market and there is a strong need for India to focus on the revival of Doha round, as I have already said. Now, the Nairobi Ministerial Conference held in 2015 had taken a decision that developing countries would be allowed to use indirect export subsidies only up to the end of 2023. Now, this would mark the end of all policy instruments to support export subsidies in agriculture. Alternative support systems are needed a lot. So, let's move on to the question. Current subsidies help farmers stay afloat, but it is still often impossible to turn a profit given the high cost of production against the low prices for which crops are sold. Critically analyze in 250 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.